Hello everybody, I just thought I would show you what I'm up to. <coughs> Today's mischief after work is I have um, bought some lithium iron phosphate battery packs. Just take this off here for a moment and you can have a look. <coughs> Make sure you don't short anything out. Uh, yeah, so it's a 16S, 16 banks of cells, all connected in series. Each cell is a 95 amp. 3.6 volt cell, so we've got 180, 190 amp hours at 48, nominal 48 volt DC. Now this came from a, a pack of uh, cells, the whole thing was a big tray. There was eight of these in a pack in a floor pan of some kind of Mercedes SUV. I didn't see the vehicle, but I, I do know that the Two of the packs had bullets in them. So I'm guessing a contact on eBay which is where I got them from. I'm guessing they came from the Ukraine. Not sure, but inevitably, uh, the, obviously, the packs that had bullets in were not usable. So cut them up, welded the ends on down here. You can see there's some really rough aluminium TIG welding going on. Uh, welded this battery contact on here. You see there's a bit more welding gone on there. You see it's a bit chopped about there, you see, because we've shortened the pack. And then you've got two contacts, you've got your plus here and your minus. There's you've got your minus. Don't get mixed up. Yeah, because this thing can deliver huge amounts of current. So you have to be a bit careful. Otherwise you could end up with uh, some fireworks going on in your office, in the uh, studio office. All right, OK, so... Um, these these um, aluminium rails went on here. I've mounted these on the nuts and bolts. Two rails. And then the idea is to mount this concrete fibre board, which is a multi... Uh, what's it called? Master board. It's quite strong. Devil to cut. You have to score it and it just kills your, uh, your standing knife blade. When you score it, you can get about one score out and the end of the blade is gone. So I had to get some tungsten blades to do that. So I cut a piece out, and then on the top here we're going to mount the um, control electronics really, and also safety cutouts and switches. So first thing we've got is this um, Jing Kong, Jing Kong active balancer, and it's an active balancer because it, instead of just um, discharging an overcharged cell, it takes power from an overcharged cell conditions the power and then pumps it into an undercharged cell to balance up the cells so that when you charge them up they stay in the same state of charge to try and eke out the life of your battery pack if you repeatedly charge and discharge and you've got a slightly weak cell that weak cell will get overcharged when you charge um, or over discharge when you discharge so the idea is to monitor the health of your battery. This thing's got a Bluetooth link on it, and also there's a CAN bus as well, which um, goes to a, a phone app I've seen so far. I don't know if there's a PC app, but you can see the voltage of each um, cell, the state of charge of each cell. You can actually see the balancing going on. You can set you can set the overall battery cutoff voltage because there's a 150 amp. This is a 150 amp version, 150 amp switch in here. So when it's over discharge it interrupts the battery flow so the it'll switch the battery off rather than damage the battery if the battery overheats it'll turn the battery off if one of the cells goes out of whack out of your spec it'll switch the battery off safety and i don't know whether they'll alert you or you have to look in and say oh well, look, my battery's not working so in any case this is a switch so the, the charging power goes through this switch and the discharging power goes through this switch as well and then all every single bank of cells has a wire connected by these looms down here into the uh, balancer uh, so and it monitors each battery voltage and then works its way up and down and then it's a two amp char uh, balancer they say so it's up to two amps we'll check that out when it's working but it can uh, shift around lumps of two amp charges throughout the battery pack to balance up the cells and it does it uh, I understand it does it during charging and discharging too it's quite clever so that's good. Then we've got this, um, I think this is a 250 amp DC 
battery switch. I need to put a dual pole isolator in really, but this um, was about 10 quid from AliExpress. It's a nice thing, mounts on a, so there's a base part somewhere in a box and some screws in there. Um, but um, it had 10 millimeter bolts, because bear in mind it's 400 amps or 250 amps, and I'll be working around 50 to 80 amps, I think. Um, so these contacts, I took them out and then turned down the shafts of these bolts here from 10 mil to 8 mil, so I could fit my lugs on. There, there's my lugs down there in that pot. Okay, my giant lugs. So we've got this isolator switch is going on there. There's also a small DIN rail, and I need to get another one of these, but they're expensive in the UK, so I, I bought, I ordered some Man Express 100 watt DC breaker. It's 200 volt, 250 volts DC, so it'll be fine on 48 volts, and it's a current breaker. So if it, if I get a catastrophic something like my pliers falling across the contacts or something, we should get a trip rather than a giant arc welder. I'm just going to mount that on there somewhere. I'm going to put another one on there at some point, so don't lecture me on safety. Out of this thing is a couple of uh, thermistors. I think one's an ambient thermistor for lead acid charging because your lead acid battery pack needs to know what temperature is. And the other one's the battery temperature, so I'm going to poke it down inside next to the battery or something so you can monitor your temperatures. And also, you can shut the thing down, switch off the power to the battery if the battery gets too hot, so it's a safety issue or a safety uh, monitoring feature of this JK charger. Well, there's instructions down here, full instruction leaflet. We'll go into much more detail when I get the thing working, I'll fire it up and I'll do a full review on it um, for anyone that's interested. And while I'm on the subject, if you've got anything you want to add or advise me to do that I shouldn't be doing or should be doing, then let me know because I'm interested to know. Um, so these battery contacts, I'm, uh, uh, annoyingly this um, the JK comes with this very fine, flexible silicone wire. I think it's uh, 7AWG. It's probably about <clears throat> probably about eight or ten millimeter square wire. I think there's two of them. This is the 150 volt amp version. The switch in there, um, but it comes without any spades. So I've got me some spades there, and also I've got this uh, crimping tool. Crimp tool, and I always walk that way. Uh, it's a hydraulic pump action, ten tons crimp squasher and it's got the, all the jaws of different size crimps and it's for crimping on the lugs onto your uh, battery leads um, so that's going to come in handy and I've tried it out on a piece of battery lead and you're pumping away thinking oh you know that's you're used to using crimp tools and you give it a bit of the beans but it just completely squashes it so no effort is required hardly at all on the this size wire to do the crimping quite good impressed with it it was about 40 quid so we've got that and we'll give that a test drive and uh, see what you think of that. Now, what else have we got? Yeah, so anyway, <coughs> what we have got is um, how I'm going to charge these batteries is you can get a whole home storage inverter and a hybrid home storage inverter has got solar panels and the battery, okay? Whereas the standard home battery, home storage solution has just got a charger, but the charger can monitor the outflow to the grid from your solar panels and stuff the excess that's going to the wood flow to the grid. It can load the internal distribution wiring of your house to stop anything going out. So you can save your power for the from that you would export to the grid in your batteries. And there's the hybrid version which has got solar panels, which the solar panels connect directly to the charger. And I'll go through this as well. I've got a couple down here. I've got one downstairs installed. I've got a three kilowatt home storage inverter, which does not have solar panel connection. It monitors via a current clamp or a smart meter, the outflowing current to the grid and the current coming from your solar panels, and then stuffs the um, power, that's uh, excess power that you're creating into your batteries. And underneath I've got the 5,000 watt hybrid inverter, which I thought well, I'd buy and try just in case I want to connect my panels directly to it. I'm undecided at the moment. But I'll show you in a moment. This um, this thing here has got a can bus, can bus, can bus, can. There's your can, the can, that connector at the air. And the can bus, when you've got a lithium iron phosphate or a lithium iron battery pack, that can bus protocol 
can talk to the charger and feed back the information about the voltage on the cells and you can turn the power on and off via that interface. You can report the temperature, report state of charge and all that sort of thing. So it gives it a smart charger which can communicate with the inverter and if the inverter needs to know it can manage the battery accordingly and also of course it can report the battery back through any online management utility and I'll go through that as well because I've got one set up on the grow what um, you can see what you can do it's really quite empowering actually and I've installed it for a friend as well who's uh, <laughs> somewhat obsessed he runs <laughs> runs in from the lounge so you've just turned the tumble dryer and the oven on at the same time so he's uh, turned into a as I say he was previously blissfully unaware and now he's painfully aware of the what's been gulping up his money via the electric meter all right so we got we're going to mount all that on there and i'll i'll uh <clears throat> won't bore you with the details i'll just show you when i've mounted it all up and uh we've got the thick cables we've got the 25 mil cables to connect up the inverter these things and uh, i'll just show you downstairs i'll just show you the installation and uh, talk a little bit about the protocols so here's my setup that's a 3000 spa 3000 grow watt inverter it's got a Wi-Fi data logging stick so you can look on your phone whenever you feel like it. You've got the mains connection, that's the main grid connection via a piece of armoured cable. That output there, the second one, the middle connector is the uh, 3000 watt emergency power. So you can switch over some circuits in your house to emergency power. If the, if the mains power, grid power fails on that one, this one pipes up. And it also drives a relay, which is a changeover relay, so you could change your lighting circuits off and say one ring main over to the limit of 3000 to keep your house lit uh, using these batteries down here. And you've got two 6.5 kilowatt batteries connected together by a CAN communication bus. The outputs are connected directly in parallel and they go up to the 48 volt connection just there. There we've got, you can see some wires there, there's the main ground bonding wire. The two wires next to it, the grey ones, are current clamps, which one of them goes to the solar PV array, the solar panel array inverter, which is not built into this. It's a separate one in my loft. Um, so it's monitoring the current going into the system from the solar panels via the inverter converted to AC. And the other one is a grid monitor. So that goes right next to your, on your meter connection to your house and that's monitoring the current going in and out of the house flowing into the grid from your panels or out of the grid into your house to be consumed as a load in your house right so by juggling this around it can um, decide what power could be wasted so it's harvesting the power that would be sent to the grid from your house because the load in your house is not high enough and stuffing it into these batteries and these lights flash it's about um, 8 30 in the evening at the moment there they are so you've got two suitcase sized batteries that weigh about 50 kilos each down there um, and you can have not advertised by any of the, the um, importers I'm a registered installer although I'm not intending to install it for anyone but I just wanted to buy some kit and do some experimentation with it but they don't tell you because there's a shortage of batteries you can connect, you can connect up to four batteries to this thing and it's just the beginning of july uh, 2022 at the moment and i installed this in march but i'd say after about the beginning of june up till now i've been completely self-sufficient in electrical power um, because these things, although you've only 10 kilowatts or 13 kilowatts usable power out of these things, kilowatt hours that is, um, capacity, they are completely recharged during the day. So I haven't bought any electricity at all. And of course we're using the, not really using the tumble dryer or, or the um, electric heater at all. So yeah, I'm self-sufficient energy for about five or six weeks hence been good but also on a sunny day i'm dumping about 10 to 15 kilowatts of power uh, kilowatt hours of power into the grid because i can't store it and that's what i want the extra store upstairs and also during the winter when there's virtually a bugger all solar power coming down from the panels i want to be able to charge the batteries from the low rate car charge tariff it was about 7p a unit as opposed to about probably by Christmas it'll be 40p a unit otherwise 
So I'm going to add another 20 kilowatts to my capacity, so I'll have 30 kilowatts in total. And then I can charge that overnight with securing the knowledge that I'm not going to draw any full power, full price electricity from the grid. And it's going to be a laugh because I quite enjoy it. All right. So I'm interested. Anybody got any uh, thing to say about all this? Uh, any ideas? Uh, the CAN bus protocol is that cable there, that black one there, talks to these two batteries. They're daisy chained together in a communications chain. And as I say, there's just text probably coming to and from about the number of cells, the voltage on each cell, the state of charge and percentage, the temperature, so that this can report all that back to my Shine app um, on my uh, on my phone. Now, that JK balancer doesn't do any of that because the uh, protocol here is unpublished from GrowWatt. The protocol that the JK balancer uses is published so I need to make a little translator to go between here and the uh, my battery pack to enable you to use a, you know basically what is a third party balancer with a grow watt system which should be quite good fun but somebody said and I don't know if you've got any comments on this that you can um, just run the thing on the put this on lead acid mode set the cutoff voltages and the charge power and then just have a dumb battery pack and just use the JK app. So initially I might just use it, tell it it's a lead acid battery pack and it will just charge it and report the voltage back. And I can uh, then use the uh, JK battery management app and get up and running straight away and then de develop, if I need to, the translator box which will read in the parameters from the JK balancer. Um, take the and, and then to relay them up to the grow watt and also send the grow watt commands like turn off turn on charge or whatever it, it needs to do back down to the uh, to the balancer in the battery pack um, yeah so that's it so if you've got any any, any comments that's great if you like this then uh, there'll be more videos in this series the next one's going to be the assembly and testing of the battery and also the assessment and probably a review of the JK active balancer um, and there'll be a lot more detail on that. So, yeah, uh, stay tuned to the channel and, uh, yeah, watch out for the updates. Thanks for watching.